G'day folks, Rod Moore here with you from Moore Art School and Learn to Paint TV. Welcome to another exciting episode of Learn to Paint TV. This week we're going to do a little seascape subject. It's a photo that I took down at Coulomb First Bay. And I like this. It's got this nice headland here and this nice rocky um, outcrop there and the water rolling around it. The one thing we will do though is we will brighten the day up. It's a little bit of a you know, gloomy day. So step one of the more method, as always, is to get our drawing in. We just want to find the big shapes and get those placed into the canvas correctly. So to do that, I'm going to use a little flat brush and I'm just going to swish that around some water and just get a little bit of paint here for us to use for our drawing. And I like to mix up, mix up a little bit of a dark like so it drops away a bit of a rock face there and then it drops away that way and then there's it gets into this rocky um, series of rocks on this rocky shelf here and then that comes back that way and then we've got here we've got these larger foreground rocks so we'll pop those in there so another one there couple of smaller ones in there okay now don't make that one run all the way out of the picture we need to leave a little bit of room there for uh for the wa water to better wrap around in here and there's a sort of a secondary series of rocks so i'm modifying the uh the composition slightly here from the original photo so step two of the more method, we need to block in our darks and then we'll block in the water around that, then we'll block in the sky. So I'm going to use a larger brush for this, okay? And to get our darks in, I'm going to just mix up a nice big dark mix of red and blue. Okay, and we'll just block this in. We're not going for 100% accuracy at this stage. We just want to get the right tone and temperature down on the canvas initially. So for this headland, we'll just push it a little bit to the blue side or the cooler side initially. And then for these rocky ledges, we'll then push it a little bit warmer. Okay. Why a little bit warmer? Just to A, to get a little bit of difference happening with... Uh, with the headland but also you know there's rocks do tend to have a little bit more warmth to them still a dark though that's the important thing we'll run that out to about there so i'll take a, a clean brush still using a large brush and we'll get this backwater in here um, first of all so I'll take a fair bit of white into that blue now I don't want it to be too happy happy blue so what that means is I'll get it a little bit darker I'll take just a touch of this dark in here just to gray it back and a tiny little pinhead of the yellow just to gray it back a little bit okay. and then we'll just run that in here and the important thing here is I need to get that horizontal line uh, but I don't want it to be perfect, so don't get the ruler out and use masking tape and so on. It never seems to look well. It just looks, you end up with a really hard line along the horizon, and that hard line will draw the eye to it. And you don't want that to be the focus, the horizon line. So keep it soft that edge. Okay, then we're going to add in some yellow into there. As the water gets closer to us, because this is the horizon, it's far away. As that water starts to move closer to us, what happens is it's going to get shallower and it's going to reflect off the bottom of the sand a little bit more in the water, which is why water looks green as it comes closer to, to uh, the land. 
Now, obviously it's gonna depend on where you live. That's not true in every area. So please don't write to me and tell me that the ocean in your area doesn't look green. However, it certainly does here <laughs> where I live. And that's what I'm gonna paint. <laughs> so you'll just have to trust me on that one. So I'm just gonna block in around these rocks. So I don't wanna clip into that rock at this stage because it's going to be wet and it'll drag that dark into my water a little bit too much okay and i'll take all of that white and pop that there we'll get a little bit of this yellow ochre we'll get a little bit of the alizarin crimson or the permanent crimson and we'll mix that up and that's quite a, a bold, strong colour. I was really planning on making it a bit lighter than that. So I'll add a bit more white to there. And I also want to have some, uh, some with just the yellow ochre as well. So let me just add a little bit more white to that mix. Okay, now the key here is I'm gonna to need to work reasonably fast because this will dry quite quickly okay so take this orange and, and whoa see what I did then just went straight through my red <laughs> not to worry let's pull that out of the paint out of the brush so what I'll do to, to tone that down because that's going to be a little bit strong I'll just take some white and then I'll start just working that up into the sky area here so nothing's ever really a problem unless we worry about it too much This is a good opportunity just to get that horizon line looking right. And what I want with that horizon line is not a hard edge as I explained before. I want a nice soft sort of feel to it. Gone over it a little bit there, but I'm okay with that because I will come back in and just add some blue into it in our step three. So now I'll take this and I'll start working that into there. Plenty of that paint. Let's work that around. So you imagine the sun's over here setting or rising, sorry, and it's going to be causing this glowing effect on the horizon. That's what we're going for. Just need to just work that red up and down here. And so notice that I'm I'm using the big bigger brush. I've got lots of paint and I'm scrubbing it around quite vigorously. Okay, now I'll take the blue and I'll take that white, mix that together, and I'll start up over in this corner here. I've still got some of that colour in my brush. If I press hard, it will come out, but at this stage, I don't really want it merging with that blue at this stage. So I'll just press lightly, I'll tread gently with it. Okay, so now this is the important part is, how do we connect these two areas together? So I wanna take what I can get here, and where I've got the edges here, I'm just gonna start just blurring those edges together and it's going to smudge some of the color and potentially will make it a little bit dirty as well so you just need to be mindful of that I might just take some paper towel and pull the excess paint off of there and uh, we'll just get more paint yeah the combination of the red yellow and and the blue has the potential to just dirty that color up so you just need to be mindful of that it's a little bit pink at the moment because I swiped through that pink. So I get a little bit more of that yellow into here. And let's just get the edges, just integrating it in. So I've got this yellow starting to appear up in the blue. Get more of that yellow in there. 
So you need to work fast um, with this. You don't want to be stopping every few seconds and contemplating what you're doing or answering the phone. It, it's going to dry off just way too quickly for that type of approach. And look, I think I'm quite happy with that, the way that's going. So you notice I've used really vigorous brush strokes, quite random looking, you know, to somebody who maybe is looking on, wondering what I'm doing, that looked like I really was just doing it randomly without much thought. However, um, it gives it a nice loose feel when you use big brush marks and you move the brush all around the place and, and do it quite vigorously. And um, we've got a nice combination of the reds, the yellows, and the blues in there without it turning to mud, right? That's the big key, because when you mix blue, red, and yellow, the three primaries, it tends to go dark and can get very murky very quickly. So we managed to, to the, you know, just with that process of doing the two halves and then just integrating it together, uh, I think it's come up with a nice little effect along the horizon line here. And when we replicate that in the water and the rocks, you know, I think that's going to work quite nicely. So as always with the more method of painting, our, our key here now is to let this dry off and then we come back and we'll start to detail it up with some, you know, some nice trees, catching some highlights, a few little rocks in here and there, this rocky ledge and some detail on the water. This is going to make a nice little painting. So get up to that spot, then let it dry off and then we can tackle step three after the break. I'll see you then. Cheers. Okay, welcome back folks. Step number three here now in the more method of painting. And this is pretty well dried off. The sky has settled down quite nicely and it's pretty much the effect that I was looking for in doing the sky. So now what we need to do is just get some detail work happening into the headland here. It's gonna be mostly in shadow and then I'll put a few little highlights and things along the outer rim and put some trees into the sky and so on. And then we'll highlight up some of these rocks and then the water, and then that'll be pretty much a finished little painting here. So, okay, so this is step three now, the more method of painting, and I've got our three primary colors out, ultramarine blue, permanent crimson, and the yellow ochre, along with our titanium white. Now, the first thing I wanna do is just get a few little trees sticking out along the edges of the hillside there, and you can see that there's quite a bit of trees up in here. And there's a nice, interesting shape of a tree in there. I want to keep this fairly random though. So I'm going to use my little fan brush and just use the edges of the fan brush to help us achieve that effect. So we'll start with getting the darker side of it in. We'll get the blue and the red happening there. Like so. I'll add a little touch of the yellow ochre into that mix. Okay. And I'm just going to just carefully just flick out a little bit of a shape of a bush or a tree happening there. Okay. Now don't overdo this. It's very easy to get carried away and end up with more tree than what we'd like. So just keep that in mind as you progress with this. Okay, so that's, that's not bad. There's a little bit of sky poking through in here and there. We'll flick a little bit out there. So I think that's, that's working reasonably well. Very good, and I'll pop that in some water. I'll pick up a palette knife now, just a little palette knife like this, and I wanna get that sort of tone, so our yellow and our red. And plenty of the titanium white in here now. That's a little bit on the pink side, so I'll get more of the yellow ochre in there. And we need more white. We'll just mix that up. So that's getting now a little touch of the blue just to grab it back a bit. Okay. 
And what we'll do, with the key with this, using the palette knife, is to have your paint spread out nice and thinly, and then just scrape it through so that you end up with a slice of paint, a little roll of paint on the back there. And we will just find the tops of these rocks here and just make some marks to indicate the highlights there. However, it's important that we shape up, shape up our rocks and don't lose the darks in the process. So this is just the highlighting section on the tops of the rocks there. And so that tone now matches in with the sunlight tone. So we get a nice cohesive sort of um, harmony in our painting. Like so. So you can just re-establish more darks in there as you need them. Okay. Which we might come back and do that in a moment. Let us now take this white. We'll get some pure white there. Get a nice big helping of that. And I'll just get a little bit now of this mixed up sunlight color from the sky. And I just want to just tint the white. I don't want it to be dominating the white. I'll probably add a little bit more white into that mix there. So what, I, what I'm wanting to make sure is we don't have a pure white that we're going to use for our water here. So it's got a little bit of a tint of that sunlight color. We come in and we just scrape through and get a roll of that paint there. And then we're good to go in here to create some, some waves and so on. So what I'm doing is just dragging that down and creating that white water that you would get around these rocks here. Like so, it's actually quite a, a fair bit of this in here, but I'm not gonna put it all in. I'm just going to indicate here and there. And we'll put a little bit out the back here. white water in here around these rocks and I think that's pretty much all we're going to do I'm quite happy with the way this has come up it's a nice little uh, quick and easy demo that anyone can do it's a pretty simple painting to do but it's got a nice effect with this glowing rising sunshine You've got this nice dark at the headlands here with a little bit of highlights and there's rocks that are, you know, are catching that morning light on them. And, you know, the approach that we've shown you here today, three steps, really a few brushes, three colors, plus our booster color of the cad yellow, just right at the end for a few touches, but nothing more than that, really. So it's basically been done with the three primary colors. This is an easy, easy painting for a beginner to do. Just follow the steps, but it's creates quite a nice effect. You know, it's got nice variation of colors and tones, this nice dark blue, sunlight rising, all this whitewash in the water here. It's a good little painting to do and it's a great little seascape exercise. One I highly recommend to you. You know, this is pretty much designed for somebody who's just starting out in their painting journey to, through to intermediate uh, levels. So I highly recommend you have a go at it. 
and uh, let me know how you go. And I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Learn to Paint TV. Uh, appreciate you watching. If you want to see more episodes or all the other episodes, then click on the link underneath me here, which is www.learntopaint.tv. And if you'd like a free course, then follow the link underneath here to learntopaint.academy. And you'll see that there's a, a button there where you can click for the free course. Come along and register for that. And uh, I think you'll enjoy the free course if you've enjoyed this demonstration here today. And I'll go into a bit more detail about the more method of painting and about the approach that we use to end up with a great looking painting like this one. So I'd love you to come and join me there at learntopaint.academy. Until next time on Learn to Paint TV, happy painting and uh, I look forward to seeing you next week. Cheers.